So when I was thinking about um, collaborative leadership and what we need as leaders today to take us into the future of IT, there were a couple of quotes that came to mind that kind of helped set the scene a little bit, I think. Peter Drucker, the management thinker. Um, I love this this quote. Um, it's very similar to an Abraham Lincoln one. So it's kind of a timeless theory, this, that the best way to predict or to create the future or to predict the future is to create it. So if we want to lead into the future of IT, what that says to me is we have to decide and make it happen. And then Mahatma Gandhi said the future depends on what we do in the present. So it's all very well knowing where we want to go as future leaders and for the future of IT. But we have to do some stuff now to make that happen. Um, and that's what we're going to really think about today. So what we're going to cover in this presentation is what's changed recently in the world of leadership and in the world of work around us and what that means for us as leaders. Because it's all very well knowing these things, but let's make this practical. Let's make sure there are things that we can do about it. So we're going to look at what you can do. And then, well, I'm a coach and <laughs> talking to you is great. But for me, what's really exciting is when you take action. So we're going to spend a little bit of time just looking at how you can plan your next steps with the information that we've covered. So don't worry, there's not going to be a test. There will be a recording of this available if you need to go back to it. But we are going to look at how you can, what you could do, and then what you are going to do as individual leaders. So let's start by thinking about the world of work and what's changed. And in particular here, I'm thinking about the post-COVID world because it seems to me there's this seismic shift in our memories around work and around how work feels that happened around COVID. So things you've probably heard about in the news um, that are, if, if, you're, if you hang out on LinkedIn, you'll have seen mentioned that maybe you know what they are, maybe you don't, maybe you kind of have thought, yep, those are exciting, but don't really apply to me. Hopefully I'm going to change your mind on that. We're going to look at the great resignation, quiet quitting, talent shortages. OK, that one's been going a lot longer than, than since COVID. The current economic situation and in most parts of the world, what's kind of a global downturn. We're going to look at sustainability, the green agenda, corporal social responsibility. I think the, the movement around that is really ramping up and one that you will as um IT folks be more than familiar with. We're going to look at hybrid working and what that's doing to the world of work. The great resignation, it makes it sound huge and big. And I'm going to throw over the next few slides lots of stats at you. So this isn't just me making this up. Um, the Bureau, the US Bureau of Labor Statistics said that in March of 2022, 4.5 million people resigned from their jobs and a further 4 million resigned in June of 2022. That's a huge number, 8.5 million people. <laughs> it kind of blows your mind in terms of the number of people resigning, but they are still reporting a labor shortage. Um, Randstad in 2022, the recruitment specialists, said that 41% of leavers left before finding a new job. That's something that's a relatively new phenomenon in the workplace, certainly at that level. And that 22% of people were intending to leave their jobs in March 22. Now, they're a recruitment company, so I don't know about you, it got me thinking, is it just recruitment companies that people are saying that to? And it seems not, because the Microsoft report into the world of work from 22 said that 41% of people globally were actively considering leaving their jobs. So actually more than Randstad had access to. And if we look at the ADP Global Workplace Study that's just come out back end of last month, that number is up again at 50% of workers considering leaving their companies. They also found that one in four of fully remote workers are actively seeking new jobs compared to one in six who work either in an office or have a hybrid working pattern. Now, as people who've got teams, that's quite scary. <laughs> if you've got a team of four people and they're working remotely, one of them is actively in the job market statistically. Now, if you've got a team of just four people, that's a very high proportion of your team. So it's something we need to be aware of as we're managing our teams. Then you may have heard about the phenomenon of quiet quitting. And I think this is a really, from a leadership perspective, it's a really interesting one. For those of you that haven't come across the term, it's when team members are consciously deciding to do just the bare minimum to keep their jobs. Now, you could argue that doing what's required to keep your job is totally fine and that's OK. But certainly in a lot of workplace cultures, the expectation to go above and beyond your role has become 
uh, the norm. And it's what certainly people have have um, driven for and people have strived for for their teams. And I think there's a, a debate to be had around, is it bad job design if people have to go way above and beyond the whole time? Or is it poor management? Or is actually all of this people deciding that they just don't like being at work anymore? So there's a lot of debate around who's responsible, who's quitting on who. Is it managers quitting on their teams? Is it team members quitting on their managers? We could get into that debate. We could talk for a whole hour and a half. I know you've got a lot more to, to, to do with your life than hear me talk about that and rant about it a little bit. So let's pull that back to the leadership perspective. And the question for me that as leaders, we need to ask ourselves if this is going on around us, what do we need to do to keep our teams engaged, to keep them actively mentally involved in their work? So that's quite quitting. Talent shortages. You've probably come across this in your organisation, in your role, that for certain key parts of the labour market, for certain skills, even within IT, there just aren't enough people who do them. And it's really hard to recruit. It's not something that's new. It's something that's been growing for a long time. And as the world of technology evolves, we have to find ways of getting talent to evolve with it so that we don't keep having shortages. I mentioned the US Bureau of Labor Statistics um, uh, re re numbers earlier, uh, as they had was it 8.5 million people resigning across March and June. And yet in June, so that same month where 4 million people resigned, there were 11 million unfilled vacancies in the US. The Manpower Talent Group, they reported in 2022, they're another um, recruitment and talent sourcing organisation, that 75% of companies they spoke to faced a talent shortage. And this num these numbers that Corn Ferry found all the way back in 2018, so in that pre-pandemic world, they estimated that by 2030, there'll be a talent shortage of 85.2 million workers, huge numbers, with an unrealized economic potential of $8.45 trillion. Mm -hmm. Huge, mind-blowing numbers. So as leaders, we need to be cognizant of we're not always going to be able to get the people we want when we want them. So we need to be thinking about what we can do to develop the people that we have got, keep them engaged and develop. Now, economic downturn. <clears throat> the, excuse me. What's going on in your local economy is going to be different depending on where you are in the world. But if you look at this map, which is the data from the World Economic Forum in January of this year, the numbers in blue on the map are the percentage of economists that are expecting weak economic growth and the orange are where we're expecting higher inflation. And that's what gets called stagflation, so kind of a tweak on inflation. Um, and what tends to happen when we've got stagflation is that we get falling outputs and rising inflation so that wages don't and can't keep up with increasing prices. That obviously puts a lot of pressure on workers. You get things like the cost of living crisis, you hear recession, and I know every kind of area has a slightly different definition of it. Some of us may technically be in it already, some of us may not, depending on definitions. And what's interesting for me in this picture is that you'll see broadly, as you move from left to right on it, the picture isn't quite as grim <laughs> over in, in China and in the East Asia Pacific as maybe it is in the United States. And here in Europe, I'm sitting talking to you from the UK, where there isn't anybody who's predicting a good economic year. And we're all expecting really high inflation. So, you know, this is a very real thing. And what it's meaning for employees is they may be struggling. Uh, to pay their bills. They're going to want higher wages. Certainly here in the UK, we're seeing a lot of public sector strike action as people are trying to get enough money to live. Um, and yet the economic growth is weak. So where are we creating that from? As leaders, we need to be cognizant of the pressures that our teams are under because that's going to impact how we manage them. I think this recession and this this saying that the recession is not like previous recessions is a personal opinion. I'm not an economist, but having lived and worked through um, two fairly significant recessions in the past, this one feels different. I'm not hearing as much talk about redundancies and recessions.